Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Thursday. Happy throwback Thursday. Who remembers like TBT every single Thursday on Instagram? I like used to be so such a nerd like such a like embarrassing moment to share but i would like lay in bed at night on wednesday nights and like search through all of my photos to like pick out what my tbt photo is going to be the next day this was like in college i believe i believe or was it like a year or two out of college i can't it had to have been in college but anyway bringing tbt back today to reflect back on the top five eyeshadow palettes from 2020 2021 and 2022 now these were the top five eyeshadow palettes from my end of year ranking where i ranked every palette i tried in that year not necessarily like my most used or like a favorite palette that i that i had owned for years but of the palettes that i ranked that I had tried in each of those three years. And this was so much fun to reflect back, especially like 2020, I was like, really? That was a favorite. Um, 2021, I was not surprised. 2021 was like the year of me finding like my makeup staples. Like I feel like that was when I found like the knotless skin glazings. Um, many of the eyeshadow palettes we're gonna talk about today uh, Bare Minerals, Blonzer, things like that. I'm like, 2021 was such a good makeup year, in my opinion and then last year so we are going to i'm going to scooch all these palettes over we're going to chat through them all today i'm very excited about it so if you're interested in reflecting back on the last three year years and my top five palettes within each of those three years stay tuned first if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content palette themed content or just chit chatting about makeup i'd love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on and other than that let's jump into the video You guys the other day i was sitting out with my planner i like obviously love to plan but i also like have stickers all over my planner and i'm fine like i find you know how some people like to like color like adult coloring books etc which i also love those i like to sticker <laughs> and it just like makes me feel so calm so i was like stickering my planner also like planning out my content for the next few months and i was like planning my palette week out and then i was like would it be a fun challenge to myself to try and post and i'm i shouldn't be saying this because now that i'm saying it i'm like i need to like hold myself accountable and will i even be able to but i thought it'd be fun to try and post at least one palette video a week for the rest of the year so i'm gonna be needing all of your palette content ideas in the comments below let me know what palette themed content you want to see i also want to start like a top 10 palette playlist so i recently posted my top 10 basic af palettes i was thinking of doing like top 10 travel palettes top 10 blah 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 let me know what top 10 palette lists you would want to see from me okay now that we got that out of the way let's chat about i'm gonna go with 2022 first then we'll do 2021 we'll end with 2020 because i just figured it'd be more fun to do it this way we're gonna get like farther and farther down the rabbit hole as we go through this video so let's chat through last year um no surprise at all as i look through these although the one like i'm like okay but i didn't I, I like i don't even remember every single palette i tried last year or the previous years the one that i'm like and i think it's just because i like i reached for this quite a bit at the end of the year so i was probably very excited about it similar to two other palettes i'm going to talk about but i haven't reached for this one a ton this year now this is something i do plan to pull out for the fall it's the huda beauty empowered palette and i was actually swatching this the other day and just forgot how absolutely beautiful some of these shades are or just like i feel like i've overlooked some of these shades as well like the shade bold moves right here it's this really beautiful really intense satin sort of not satin um metallic sort of like gunmetal shade that i just think would be so beautiful even with like my pan that palette like my abh sultry i really should pair those two together um but i'm super excited to play around with this palette in the fall it's a really really beautiful palette and something a little bit different than like what huda normally does it's a little bit bolder it's a little bit more deep and i was just really impressed with this palette so this was oh i should have been going in order too of like five four three two one this one was sorry you guys number three let's start with number five from last year and number five from last year was um speaking of palettes that like came out right at the end of the year that i was just super excited about but my number five top five palettes last year was the odin's eye christmas palette and this is such a beautiful palette pretty sure odin's eye became my favorite eyeshadow brand of all brands i've tried 
last year and that really has not changed. I will say this year, some of the palettes that Odin's I have released, I've had a little bit of trouble with some of their shades, but then like love the majority of them. Whereas last year was like, I didn't have trouble with any shades. Anyway, this is the Christmas Eve palette. I'm so excited to pull this out again this winter, just because obviously this does give me more like winter feels. And um, I've been having fun with blues this year. So I feel like I do need to pull this out and get, get some more use out of it just because I have been loving blues. I also think um, this yellow shade is something that can be so so pretty for the fall but that was my number um five last year still love this palette still love odin's eye there are, in fact are three odin's eye favorites in my top five from last year um number four last year not surprised at all was my danessa myrix lightwork volume three i raved about this palette a lot last year and i have continued raving about this palette this year i hope that danessa myrix has a lightwork volume 5 on the horizon because i would be so excited for that and definitely snatching it up she just makes very very unique shades in my opinion i think they're absolutely beautiful and i love this palette so 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 much as mentioned my number three was the huda empowered palette sorry to spoil that for you um my number two palette last year was not surprised at all was my odin's eye hello palette i reached for this palette so so much last year especially because this released towards the beginning of 2022 and it's just something that i continued to reach for and reach for and reach for and i have continued to reach for and reach for and reach for this palette this year in fact i do have a pan on the shade double-sided down here that i did hit this year and i just absolutely love this palette i love green eyeshadow so i love the greens that we have but i also love the shade river it's this really really beautiful like just you know like kind of like a blue brown like there is something about like a blue brown bluey purple like something about a shade similar where is it similar to this that i just freaking love so um this palette has my heart still to this day and then my number one was another palette that released towards the end of last year but i just was so madly in love with this palette and i will say i was swatching this palette again the other day and i was like oh my gosh i should have had this palette out all year like snowman with like my sultry palette like that would pair so beautiful with just like a neutral base oh my goodness um the shade jingle bell the shade new year i need to use new year as a nail polish like could i get away with that for the summer although i don't like love the last nails that i did but for viking season these are perfect but they're a little bit deep for still being in the summer anyway i'm off on a total tangent here this every single like this just is such a special 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 palette still love it and cannot wait to get more use out of this so this would definitely still be a top so i would say of all five palettes that were top five last year like these are all still great palettes in my opinion my opinion has not changed i still do really enjoy these palettes and i would still recommend all five of those moving on to 2021 which as i said is just like the year of me finding all the perfect makeup in my opinion um and I, I i need to go in order that i listed these okay so number five was the huda beauty wild tiger palette yes i remember um i believe i wore this to the state fair that year and i just loved the way that my look turned out i really love this duochrome shade in the center i did have one of my shades it was this bright gold which i wasn't super sad about because i don't love a gold shade um, but that broke uh, on me. I do plan to pull this out in the fall time just because it does give very fall, like it feels like a fall palette, kind of like grungy oranges and mustards. And I'm so excited to play around with this one again this fall. Still love this palette. Still think it's a great one. Still recommend. You know, I still love and recommend this all the time. I feel like I have not been able to shut up about this palette since 2021. This is the NARS Summer Solstice. This is the palette that made me fall in love with NARS. I have purchased every single palette that they've released since. I love this palette so much. And I especially love these like ethereal lid topper shades. They are just so beautiful on the eyes. And I just feel like this palette is great because it's just so appropriate for like every it's such an easy reach and that's why i love this palette so much the formula is amazing you guys know i love that palette i gave viziart a second try in 2021 and girl i was not disappointed the viziart soleil la plaque i feel like i've 
talked about this palette quite a bit this year as well. I love it. I love that Viseart, and it took me a little bit to come around and appreciate this, but I like that their formula is a little bit more buildable. That works best for me. So I don't know why I was so opposed to that in the past, but I love the color story of this palette because I can just get my neutral everyday browns, but then I can have fun with yellows. And I just love to have fun with the yellow. So I really like like these four shades right here. I love the fun blue that's not like super vibrant by any means, but just a fun little pop. And I just absolutely adore this palette. This is still a favorite in my collection as well. Shoot you guys, am I, have I been going in order? No. Okay, so Huda Wild Tiger was number, not that it really matters, that was number five. Number four was my Nabla Side by Side. I was really obsessed with this palette in 2021 and when I pulled this back out this year to use this no pan left behind, I don't know if I'm bored of the color story or if I just don't think that the formula is as great as I once thought, but this is a palette I'm like, do I even need this in my collection still? A part of me wants to try this as like a pan that palette or at least try and hit pan in every single shade before decluttering it, but this is not a top palette in my collection anymore. And I'm so surprised to say that because you guys know I love Nabla Cosmetics so much. I'm like a Nabla stan. I just, I don't love this one like I used to. So I would not consider that a top palette in my collection anymore. My number three of 2022 was the Glam Light Chocolate Martini. This one is not one I was going to purchase when I first saw the teaser photos. I actually was going to purchase the Dirty Olive, which a part of me still regrets not purchasing Dirty Olive. Like I still think about that palette sometimes. I think you can still get it, but I, I don't need it. I love this because in person, there's actually a lot of variety and a lot of depth to this palette. And I created a couple looks with this palette when I first got it that I just absolutely loved. I felt so confident in. There's times where like I'll do a really bold look and like I like it on camera, but it's not something I would ever wear out. But I actually ended up wearing the looks like out and about and I just felt really good and really pretty. And so I feel like that's part of the reason this has a place really near and dear to my heart. I don't know that this is like a tippity top palette in my collection, but it is a palette that I value and really like, especially like in terms of neutral palettes in my collection. So I do still really enjoy this one. I just don't know that it would be like an absolute tippity top favorite in my club, but maybe, honestly, maybe, because I really do love this for a neutral option. I love Glam Light's formula, both their mattes as well as their shimmers, so I do still really enjoy that. And then my number two was the Viseart, and my number one was the NARS. No surprise, love, recommend, etc. Okay, so then we are gonna wrap it up with my top five of 2020, and this is where I was like, first of all 2020 was the year of covid i know when i was home like not working i was playing around with color a lot in 2020 but none of there's like not really colorful palettes on this list so i'm wondering if i chose my top five from like the palettes i felt like i was reaching for most I, like i'm like i look at these and i'm like we're, we're gonna get into it okay <laughs> Number five uh, was the Sydney Grace Tiny Marbles palette. And I did really love this palette and still do. This is just a palette that I feel like I have neglected since 2020. Like I still really love this palette. I would highly recommend. I think Sydney Grace has an incredible formula. Um, speaking of blue brown shades, the shade Scarab, one of my best blue rounds in my entire collection. I love a lavender as well. So I love that we have this matte lavender. I just have, especially, and I also marvel like, there's so many good shades in here. I just, this palette has been neglected. So I will say that this is still like a top recommendation in my collection, but it's also one of my more neglected palettes, which sometimes I do. Like palettes that I think are really special, I neglect. I feel like this is one of those situations. Coming in at number four, this one I was surprised to see in my top palette and it's the Melt Rust palette, but I know I was using this a ton as an eyebrow shade. I have a pan in it. But like in terms of day-to-day -day wear, I like looks that I get with this palette, but I think with Melt Matte, like with Melt in general, I feel like it just takes work and effort to use their formula. It's not like a beginner-friendly formula in my opinion. So that's why I was a little bit surprised to see this in my top palettes, but I do still really enjoy this palette. I'm very excited to pull this out for the fall time, create some really beautiful grungy looks. It's a good palette. I do love a lot of melts palettes i do think they're just a more difficult formula to work with and i wouldn't be like a top recommendation in my collection 
So I was a little bit surprised to see that one on the list. And then I think I was surprised to see this on the list because this is another one of those very neglected palettes, but it's such a staple great palette and i do know in 2020 when i got this i was reaching for it a lot and it's the natasha denona biba palette this is a really really great like basic just basic palette just it's got your basic essentials it's all here there's warm tones there's cool tones there's neutrals there's nothing super like sparkly and intense not not like a crazy metallic but in terms of like when we talk about like an easy reach that is what this palette is so why am I not reaching in for it that much? I can't say this is a tippity top favorite in my collection right now just because I know how infrequently I have reached for this palette. And do I think that this could be a favorite if I actually put forth effort into reaching for this more often? Yes. This is a very, this feels very fall to me too. So I will be pulling this out for the fall time. But I just wouldn't feel right saying this is like a top palette in my collection right now because i just i never reach for it and i couldn't tell you why because it's such an easy palette to reach for it's great quality it's a good formula i just don't reach for it and it costs so much money like why don't i reach for it my number two i was not i'm not surprised at all <laughs> another odin's eye palette it is the did i have any no odin's eye in 2021 but i'm like what did they release in 2021 maybe the norms palette Anyway, that's beside the point. This was my first ever Odin's Eye purchase, my first ever palette from Odin's Eye. My favorite shade in here has cracked, broken, and is like completely gone. Um, this green special shade was really similar to the green special shade in the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction palette, so I just absolutely loved that shade. Um, I do not reach for this palette enough, but it's such a solid palette and i i know like it was definitely a top palette for me in 2020 because i was reaching for this all of the time i need to pull this one back out for the fall as well i just feel like there's some really beautiful like grungier tones there's a lavender in this palette too like this is a solid palette odin's eye quality has definitely improved since this palette but i do really enjoy this one still even like this like yellow gold shade really beautiful this shade right here we need to pull it out we need to pull it out it would not, this would not be like my favorite palette in my collection anymore. Odin's Eye has released so many more palettes and their quality, like I said, has improved, but this is still a solid palette and this was an absolute favorite in 2020. And then my top favorite palette of 2020, I was like, was this really? Maybe I purchased it towards the end of the year, so like, that's why. And I, I do really like this palette, but I'm like, really? <laughs> it is the Odin's Eye, or not Odin's Eye, the Urban Decay Naked Honey another palette that will be pulled out for the fall i just this is another neglected palette in my collection which is i really do want to play around with this because i love the warm like honey colors in this and i'm like why have i not been wearing this because i feel like i'll really love and have loved every look that i've created but i feel like i purchased it towards the end of 2020 2020 used it a bunch and then it's been like neglected since then very similar to the natasha Denona biba palette um but i never would have guessed that this was my top favorite palette top drink palette of 2020 would not have guessed it's not a favorite in my collection anymore and part of the thing is i've tried more like indie brands more like special shadows and my collection has just grown a lot i will also say i think as things get older in in your collection they just kind of like feel less i don't want to say feel less special but it's like that it's kind of like when you buy a book and if you don't read it in that first year, are you going to really read it a year later? Like, yes, but like it just, it loses its appeal a little bit, like a little bit. It's kind of like you get out of like the honeymoon phase with your eyeshadow palettes. You know what I'm saying? Um, but those were the five from 2020. So that is it for today's video. That is going to wrap it up. I would love to know if you guys keep track of like your favorite palettes. What were your favorite palettes the past, the past few years? Are they still your favorite palettes? Let a girl know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around to watch these videos and for supporting my channel as you guys always do. I appreciate you guys so much and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.